Okay, Dave, what now? Hold the throttle rod on the left carburetor in the up position so that the throttle shaft lever is tight against the idle speed screw. You got it? Uh-huh. Now thread the rod up or down as necessary in the lower swivel until it freely enters into the hole in the cross shaft lever and reconnect the rod. Remove the pullback spring and hold the cross shaft lever in the wide open position. Pull the accelerator rod rearward as far as possible. On power glide models, pull the rod through detent. Now adjust swivel so that it freely enters the hole in the cross shaft lever and reconnect with the spring. Now check carburetors for full return to idle position. If the throttle levers do not contact the throttle screws, never try to readjust the accelerator rod length. Make the adjustment at the transmission bell crank. Then recheck. Well, that's it, Joe. Let's check out the engine with test equipment. Hook up a dwell meter and a tachometer. Then run the engine at five to 600 RPM and note dwell reading. If necessary, readjust point gap and recheck dwell. The reading at all speeds should remain constant or within the allowable variation. If not, it means pulling the distributor for major service. Now that dwell is okay, hook up a timing light and disconnect the vacuum advance hose. Want it set on the high side? You bet. But remember, only advance the timing within specs without causing detonation or spark knock. Now reconnect the vacuum advance hose, and while accelerating the engine to approximately 1,500 RPM, observe the movement of the vacuum advance arm. If it does not move, it indicates a defective advance unit or hose. Now for the carburetor vacuum balance check. Take this hose assembly and connect it to the left and right carburetor spark port tubes. Connect the vacuum gauge to the T. Now connect this small turnbuckle and hooks to the cross shaft lever and to the fuel lines. Start the engine. Rotate turnbuckle to maintain a steady RPM between 11 to 1200 and note vacuum reading, usually somewhere between 10 to 14 inches of vacuum. Okay? Okay. Now pinch the right hand hose to shut off vacuum from the right carburetor and note the gauge reading. If it shows a decrease of more than one inch of vacuum, return the engine to idle speed and increase the length of the throttle rod on the left carburetor by turning it counterclockwise one complete turn in the swivel. Reconnect rod and recheck. Repeat if necessary until the vacuum reading is steady, plus or minus one inch. Let's assume there is an increase of more than one inch of vacuum when the hose to the right carburetor is pinched shut. In this case, decrease the length of the left carburetor throttle rod by turning it clockwise one turn at a time. Then reconnect rod and recheck until vacuum is steady, plus or minus one inch. Joe, just for example, let's say that we get a change of less than one inch of vacuum on the gauge with the right carburetor hose pinched shut. Okay? All right. Now, release the right hose and pinch shut the left hose. The carburation system is considered in balance when this test of the vacuum balance between carburetors changes less than one inch. There are some carburetor linkage systems, Joe, where you have to remove and bend the non-adjustable right carburetor throttle rod and readjust the left carburetor throttle rod before you can get the carburetors in balance. Now let's set idle speed and mixture. Disconnect the choke vacuum hoses from the base of both carburetors and reconnect the vacuum gauge to these two locations. Slip the spark port hose and plastic cap back on the carburetor tubes. Then, with the engine running, adjust curb idle with chokes open. When one idle speed screw is turned in one direction, the opposite carburetor idle speed screw must also be turned an equal amount in the same direction. Then adjust idle mixture screws for peak steady vacuum. Now let's check fast idle cam clearance on both carburetors. Shut the engine off and place the tang of the throttle lever on the step of the cam next to the highest step. Clearance between the idle speed screw and the lever should be 78 thousandths. Bend the tang up or down as necessary and recheck. Now let's check the choke vacuum linkage setting. Use the accelerator pullback spring to pull the choke valve closed. Hook one end to the choke linkage and hook the opposite end to a convenient location. Now push and hold the vacuum diaphragm arm squarely inward against the diaphragm and use a 3 16 drill to measure between the lower edge of the choke valve and the inner wall of the bowl cover. If not within limits, 0.180 to 0.195 thousandths. Remove drill, bend connecting link, and recheck. Remove pullback spring. When choke vacuum linkage clearance is correct, the throttle lever tang should rest on the step of the fast idle cam next to the highest step. If not, adjust by bending the outer choke shaft lever tang with pliers. 
Now hold the left choke valve closed, then pull the choke rod up until it stops. Turn rod until it freely enters the hole in the choke shaft lever. Then lengthen rod two turns. Repeat the operation on the right carburetor and reconnect choke rods, accelerator rod, and pullback spring. Now, come over to the bench and take a look at this 1964 Corvair carburetor. I want to run through the vapor vent check. It's important. The throttle lever tank should hold the vent open at curb idle speed, as you see here. Then, when the fast idle tank just begins to move away from the high step of the fast idle cam, the vent should just finish closing. If necessary, bend the throttle lever tang and recheck. Okay? Okay. Let's get back to our own job and wind it up. Remove all test equipment. Then reconnect choke vacuum hoses at the base of the carburetors. Clean air cleaner filter elements and install. Or if a paper element is used, check and replace as necessary. Install the spare tire. Start engine and readjust the carburetor mixture screws if necessary. That's it, Joe. Uh, how does this method of synchronizing the carburetor linkage system work on earlier models, the 60s and 61s? Okay, except for some choke adjustments. Well, that sure is a thorough way to tune up all Corvairs. And easy, too. <laughs>